pleasure to introduce you Czesław Premski, professor from Krakow, who used to be once upon a time a professor and vice rector in the International Academy for Philosophy in Liechtenstein, where I had a nice opportunity to study together with Professor McCormick, who is also our professor at this conference. And I must tell you one small secret. All people has usually one father and one mother. And usually, scientists or those who got a PhD has also at least one father, but I have two fathers. I worked on my thesis first with Rocco Buttiglione, the majority of you know the name and met him, and then I continued with Professor Czesław Premski, and the very fact that I have the possibility to teach at the Ukrainian Catholic University is his guilt. I leave you floor and we will listen to your lecture on the future of humans. Thank you very much. If you came closer, I would probably, probably could, um, uh, uh, and I would prefer to, to give up the mic, but let's try. Uh, is it better with the mic or is it better without the mic? With. 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 Okay. So stay where you wish, but if you, uh, if you uh, uh, moved closer, it would be nicer. Because you know, to talk to to uh, empty uh, seats in front of me is not that nice. And uh, to reciprocate, uh, you know, that talk about the guilt. Uh, I would say that um, you know, if you have the type of like uh, the future of humans, uh, technology, paternalism, and subsidiarity, uh, you are at a loss, and I am too. And I have to confess that, you know, I, I'm not guilty. That is to say, the title is the invention, the joint uh, proposal by my uh, friends and colleagues uh, and former students, Vlodko Turczynowski and Yuri Pidlisny. So if anyone is to, blame, to be blamed, it's them. Now, we have to decipher that title, because otherwise we are continue to be at the last. Uh, the future of humans, that's the first part. But you know, we are all humans, so roughly we know what we mean by humans. But uh, that part of the title is tricky because uh, there is a huge question mark in uh, that first part of, of the title. Are we going to talk about the future of humans only, or are we going to teach uh, to, to talk about the uh, the future of humans and so to speak non-humans? Uh, uh, in the top of the city, you have all the possible uh, terms for non-humans, like techno-humans or transhumans or post-humans, and there are techno-humanists and transhumanists and post-humanists. So, actually, in the first part of the title, we have two parts, the future of humans and the future of those non-humans or transhumans or post-humans, whatever. And then you have this huge second part, uh, and which will be the third part of uh, if time uh, uh, permits the third part of, of um, our afternoon. So, um, without further ado, let's start with the easiest part, the future of humans, which is very difficult in itself. Um, before I start talking about the, the, the future of humans, a quick flashback. Uh, in the 90s, when the old uh, uh, references like 
iron curtain, cold word, sub block, teleart with the Berlin Wall, um, a new term was on everyone's lips, globalization. And trying to, to better understand this new uh, word and new phenomenon, I've written some 20 years ago a, a, a paper uh, titled Over a Dozen Ugly Words on Globalization. And to give you just a few uh, examples of those ugly words on globalization, let me uh, uh, name a few of them. Of them. Deregulation, delocalization, uh, denationalization, uh, deterritorialization, uh, dematerialization, financialization uh, of the economy, of the world economy, social fragmentation, and social disintegration, marginalization, all of them sound uh, terrible. Globalization, no exception. But in spite of the fact, uh, in spite of the acoustic ugliness of uh, these words, uh, there were many hopes attached to that phenomenon of, of globalization. Not all, all of these hopes have been, uh, have come true, especially the hope that one word, no more divided into blocks, uh, will be, that is to say, humankind as a whole, will be in better position to cope uh, with the problems that appear uh, on, on the horizon. Problems concerning all of us, all of humans. Uh, now, where are, where are we in that respect? Uh, are we really a united, so to speak, human task force uh, trying to at least uh, define and then to uh, start to combat some of the dangers, some to solve some of the problems that we've seen of, uh, on the horizon uh, uh, after the collapse of communism. The motto of the recent 55th Munich uh, Security Conference in the second half of February this year was the great puzzle. The implication is that ours is the word that instead of uniting its forces and resources to face global problems, are or have been breaking into pieces. In her opening statement, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Angela Merkel makes the following remark. My goodness, I have uh, written that quote in German. Uh, I will read that in German, and then we, uh, I will try to decipher uh, that, that in, in uh, in my Congress English. Ich fange jetzt einmal mit dem ersten Teil des Themas an. Rivalität zwischen großen Mächten, das gibt uns ja schon einen Einblick in das etwas, das etwas als Ganzes, als eine Architektur der Welt äh, angesehen worden ist. Und doch unter Druck ist es gerade. Und hier sogar als Passung beschrieben wird, also als in Teile zerfahren. To summarize that, that, that quote, uh, there was under the construction in the early 90s the global security system 
and this global security system is now in our eyes demanded. Uh, there is no more one security system and uh, uh, this is this is the situation. This is the situation in which humans, all of us living on this globe, have to face global problems. Not one coherent whole ready to face the imminent challenges, but rather the great puzzle broken into pieces. And these challenges are many. Let's name, by way of examples, just a few of them. First, economic and political problems. To give you an example, robotics and robotization, more and more jobs are turning out to be superfluous. Not all of them will be replaced by new jobs uh, in the service sectors of the economy. Scarcity of jobs is the perspective of the future of humans very soon. Only the highest qualified uh, will uh, count on the market. Workplace will become more and more competitive environment. What this means, this competitive environment of uh, the business today, we know already, the leading giant firms supply us with examples. This is part of the secret of the giant winners who take all that pressure on the, on the employees. But, and here's the second point, uh, point. Some might say robotization is a blessing in disguise. Maybe uh, we are approaching times when human beings will be at, the, at, at long last freed from boring chores of uh, everyday work at the workplace. Instead of complaining that jobs will become very scarce, we should rather cherish this bright perspective of infinite vision and the actual uh, liberty that will finally liberate the whole richness of human potentialities. But what about means of livelihood? Where from will they come? And one of the answers is big, basic, income guarantee. Uh, other uh, terms are also uh, well known, for example, uh, citizens' income. Although the Swiss, by the majority of 76.9% uh, in the 2016 referendum, uh, rejected the proposal of citizens' income, uh, which would consist in periodic cash payment delivered to all, irrespective of whether the person works or, or not, whether uh, the person disposes of any, any uh, means or assets or no, but in spite of, the, of, of that uh, uh, no of the Swiss, uh, there are some ex experiments all over the world, for example in Alaska, or in Canada, or in Finland. Uh, this is also a perspective that we have to take into account when speaking about the, the, the prospects uh, and the future of, of humans. And there are huge problems that might appear on the horizon when such a situation will uh, uh, continue to be the social and political reality. People not employed anymore 
uh, relying on, on that big uh, uh, basic income uh, guarantee, uh, disposing of uh, free time all the time, and not always knowing what to do with all that uh, uh, paradise. Uh, one, one would be inclined to, to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to say. But anyhow, that big solution uh, will certainly uh, reshape uh, social and economic uh, landscape of the world of, uh, of, the, of the future of humans, of the future of humans, no doubt about that, but in what sense, in what direction, no one really knows. And this is part of the problem. There are so many prospects on the horizon, but no one knows where we go uh, from here. Uh, what's, what's our uh, actual destination? Not what, what our hopes are, but what's our actual um, uh, inclination? Some may, for example, and this is the next point, object big is a rather outlandish topic to discuss here in, in a leaf or to discuss on this globe, since we have to, uh, to really uh, tackle uh, 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 more serious problems, like uh, the problem of the growing in inequality, uh, you know, uh, and, and poverty uh, in that in uh, in, the, in that uh, era of uh, uh, immense richness of uh, 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 quite a number of of, uh, of the well-to-do uh, people. There are not only millionaire but billionaire. Uh, depending on, on uh, uh, which, uh, which language you, you, uh, you speak. Uh, <clears throat> in uh, that catalogue of the ugly terms uh, that we're trying to, to explain uh, the globalization, there was also that uh, fear uh, uh, articulated that globalization will result in a deep divide uh, into winners and losers. Uh, these words were, we've named them disintegration and marginalization. And the critics say, this is what we observe, the growing inequalities of income, prestige, social status between those who are in and those who are out. Uh, those who profit from the effects of globalization and those who are worse off. Rich become richer and poor are poorer. And uh, walls separate them. In the long run, this situation can't be maintained. But how to cope with that growing divide once again, no one really knows. One of the visible effects of the rising waves uh, of, of, of that problem uh, are the, the rising waves of uh, immigration. These rising waves of immigration reflect not only purely economic and social problems, but also uh, the political failure of globalization. There were several models of the future, uh, of the future political shape of, of the uh, uh, coming world. Um, that would replace the hostile blocks waging the endless Cold War. There were uh, various models, a two-polar model, probably US and China, as the major leaders. One hoped uh, to orchestrate the global cooperation. There were models in which some uh, global leading powers would contribute to the uh, 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 rationalization and uh, 
um, harmonization of the global reality apart from the US and China, for example, the United Europe, uh, Russia, maybe South America. There was also that idea that 21st century will be the, the century of, of Latin America, for example. Only some pessimists have predicted that the future has also less orderly potentialities in its store. Another ugly word was used as a label, balkanization. The diagnosis of the present situation as articulated uh, at the mid-February Munich conference is that none of these models, none of these models has been realized in its purity, so to speak. Sure, we observe the, the activity of the US and China as the major actors, and also the activity of several other less, so to speak, major actors. But they are not very much inclined to cooperate. Rather, they exploit local conflicts in different parts of the world to better their own position on the world chessboard. Bigger and smaller regional powers, such as Turkey, Iran, Saudi Arabia, some African countries, Pakistan, try in turn to imitate the major players and better their own position. At the end, at, at there are many points on the globe where the situation, especially of the civilians, and of the poor, is worse than the word balkanization would imply. In the shorthand of the media speak, there are so many points where, or places where we have to face the humanitarian catastrophes. Instead of an architecture of security, we have a decomposed great puzzle with uh, places where the, the, the problems are really acute. Just to name one example, it's the MM. Another point, our environment may collapse. One of the consequences of the problems mentioned so far is that we, uh, this, the humans, cannot mobilize the adequate resources and the necessary modicum of foresight, prudence, solidarity, and resolve to cope with the paradigmatically global challenge of the imminent climate catastrophe. Global warming seems to be a global problem in spite of the effects uh, of, all the, of all the estimates of the effects of uh, global warming. That is, uh, that if we as humans continue to behave as usual, the point of no return will be soon reached. In spite of, of, of that, there is no hope for a globally coordinated action in the long-run perspective. We should be concerned now. It is not only because global warming will cause the melting of Arctic cap and, uh, in consequence, floods that will, uh, 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 will ensue, um, uh, uh, floods that will distract many urban centers such as New York or Tokyo melting of the Arctic ice cap will let free huge amounts of methane, CH4, gas that would accelerate the greenhouse effects 
several dozen times. And yet, Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and other uh, countries refuse to take part in the uh, uh, in, in initiating the serious countermeasures. Why? In that respect, the globe is divided into those who would lose at the uh, environmental catastrophe and those who, who will uh, win. This is certainly not a win-win situation. Uh, so, for example, Russia will profit immensely from the melting of the ice, uh, 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 Arctic ice cap. New uh, 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 ways of doing uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the global uh, business will offer to them. To some extent, this goes, all, this goes also uh, 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 for US. That's why probably um, uh, American president, president regards himself as a, a Russian down to a solid trader, as he, as he, uh, as he uh, defines himself. But there are other places, and, and uh, uh, also very important places like China or Japan or Indonesia, that will be very, very badly affected by, by that, that uh, uh, change. Now, this was just a short list of examples of problems that are on the horizons of uh, humans in the very next future. We uh, didn't mention these perspectives that are probably much more preoccupying than all that we've said uh, until now. That is to say, these perspectives of going beyond what we know as us, as humans, in the direction, in the direction of post-human reality or transhuman um, reality. Let me start uh, uh, very brief remarks uh, concerning that point. Uh, you probably ask uh, yourselves questions like, is it possible that in a few decades there will be a class of superhuman beings who, owing to the bioengineering and direct brain computer interfaces, will dispose of um, capacities that by far, uh, that, that will be by far surpassing the capacities of humans? Or is it possible that these superhuman beings will form an elite that will dominate a large mass of not transformed individuals still being just humans, just homo sapiens. Quite frankly, once again, no one knows, no one's known. Both scenarios sound like science fiction. To quote from an author whom you probably read more intensely than me, because he's the best-seller author, Yuval Harari, uh, uh, I've heard that Homo Deus by Yuval Harari has been translated also in the, in the Ukraine. A tremendous success all over the world. Uh, I like this, this, uh, uh, this man uh, because uh, he, he writes in such a clear uh, uh, way uh, things that it's very hard to agree with. And uh, I, I like him uh, also for the fact that he doesn't agree with himself which is a, a sort of consolation uh, if you take into account that his basic inclination is rather preoccupied. I will try to explain that, that point if we have time 
uh, towards the end of, of my life. Uh, the end is inside, but not quite near. I have only uh, I have only covered the first part, but the the second and the the, uh, the third part will be uh, much shorter, and then we will have, I hope, at least 20, 20 minutes time to, uh, to 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 discuss these questions. Uh, let me quote from uh, Yuval Harari, not from Homo Deus, but from uh, 20, uh, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century. I'm not working for this man, <laughs> but this is the book. I, see, I really do recommend reading that, uh, hoping that you will disagree with him, like me, but hoping that you will see uh, uh, better where we are. Uh, he's really very, very good. And you know, uh, what's, what's also quite interesting about him is that he writes in Hebrew and then he translates that into, into English and uh, probably because of, of the, the double effort on uh, you know, articulating his ideas very, very uh, uh, precisely, uh, his, his language is uh, uh, rich, but in a sense simple. Uh, so, uh, let me quote him to give you an example of how he writes. If somebody describes to you the word of the mid-21st century, the mid-21st century, that is to say around 2045. 2045 is an important uh, and temporal reference. You know why? Because some of the transhumanists uh, are pretty sure that this will be the moment of informational singularity comparable to the Big Bang. And they draw practical consequences from that. Uh, but uh, Let's, uh, let's quote Harari once again. If somebody describes to you the word of the mid-21st century and it sounds like science fiction, it is probably false. It is probably false. But then, if somebody describes to you the word of the mid-21st century, and it does not sound like science fiction. It is certainly false. Uh, so this is where we are. We have to speculate about scenarios that are science fiction. And uh, if we give up that, we certainly uh, will be wrong. But I'm not going to, to, to go into the details of these speculations. Uh, let's rather spend a while on what already exists with respect to uh, these uh, preoccupying perspectives. There is a language that, uh, so to speak, uh, allows us to classify some of the uh, uh, positions on the map of various conceptions of what will happen uh, when we say farewell to our natural uh, homo sapiens reality. Let's first uh, start with the uh, term which is not that, that far going as transhumanism. The word techno humanism. To give you an example of techno-humanist idea, uh, I would uh, refer to uh, uh, to a technical term used by U.S. Army. The U.S. Army 
seems to be equipped with something which is called the um, attention helmet. Attention helmet is something that allows you to concentrate on your task. Imagine that I have an attention helmet and I would be thousand more efficient as a lecturer because of that attention helmet. I would take in, uh, very quickly all the linguistic decisions translating uh, you know, uh, from my Polish into English what I had to say and it would sound much better. But what's really at stake is taking decision, making decision. Uh, this attention helmet enables the, the, the men on the battlefield uh, to uh, be much more efficient uh, uh, decision maker, and and this is uh, you know uh, for for the military this is quite an answer. Uh, there are there are also some other devices that uh, allows you to um, modify the. Uh, biological underpinning of yours. Chemicals, for example, that also enhance your intellectual uh, capacities, emotional capacities, and so on and so on. So, um, uh, uh, in many different ways, without going too far, we can, uh, using mechanic, chemistry, uh, bioengineering to some extent uh, to upgrade present day humans without transforming into, uh, them into non-humans. They will be still humans but equipped with devices that will uh, uh, upgrade them in, in certain respects, in certain uh, directions. Uh, one of the of the um, uh, direction of uh, the actual scientific uh, directions of the actual scientific work in in that respect is a uh, new approach to psychology. There are some psychologists who say we've concentrated um, too much on uh, two things. Uh, disregarding something that uh, is, is much more worthwhile studying and researching. These two things were subnormative mental states, people in mental disorders. That was the, the uh, so to speak, favorite subject matter of much uh, of, of the psychological research. And the other point, the, the other subject matter beloved uh, by, by uh, psychologists and, and um, uh, psychiatrists is called weird. That is to say, Western, educated, industrialized, rich and democratic people. 95% of yearly output of psychological research year for year goes into that direction. One studies most uh, of the time the students of the best American universities. It's as simple as that. But even if all communities would be investigated, uh, 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 it would be less than the entire scope of human uh, potentialities. We all are touched by modernity. Uh, take, for example, the, the sense of smell. We can't really, by smelling, uh, tell anything about whether a person in front of me is pro or con is positively or negatively um, 
postured uh, with regard to me. But this was uh, not the case uh, some thousand years ago. In uh, the uh, first periods of humankind, it was a very important uh, capacity to smell, to know from smelling, from the, from the smell, for example, that someone is really hostile to you. And it was possible. So, um, the psychologists would say, we have some potential that, that should be uh, studied more intensely, and this will help us to upgrade uh, human beings without transform transforming them into, into um, uh, non-humans. But what about transhumanism? I've said that this is the more preoccupying perspective. There are many varieties of transhumanism. One of these is already mentioned Singularityism. Uh, we should prepare ourselves, they say, the singularityists. If you write, if you if you Google singularityists, you will get immense number of of uh, more or less scientific uh, uh, articles on on uh, that new fad uh, uh, of. Um, interdisciplinary discussions. They say we should uh, prepare ourselves for the singularity of uh, infinite superintelligence. There is a kind of law that every two years the uh, computing power of all the existing computing machines is doubled. So the limit of all practically infinity will be uh, reached very soon, namely 2045, according to uh, one of the prophets of um, uh, that uh, variety of transhumanism uh, by the name of Raymond Kurzweil, residing, of course, in California. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this singularity will uh, consist in the fact that we will dispose, we will have at our disposal the infinite uh, informational capacities in every domain. Also concerning us as human beings. So any ailment, any deficiency, any uh, non-acceptable state of mind, all that can be cured or, or tackled in one way or another owing to uh, these resources of uh, infinite uh, knowledge. And uh, the great hope of Raymond Kurzweil is that he will live long enough, enough to, to be uh, alive uh, uh, in the year 2045 to profit from, from, uh, from that opportunity. What's also uh, at the horizon, according to them, is that we might prolong our human existence infinitely. Practically speaking, we, we might speak about immortality. Some other transhumanists say we might uh, use these capacities uh, uh, to um, eliminate any suffering. So there is this hedonistic utilitarian variety of, of uh, transhumanism. Enough of, of transhumanism. Uh, another man by the name of Max Moore uh, proposes something that he calls extropianism. Uh, 1988, he wrote Extropy, the Journal of Transhumanist Thought. Uh, he's running the cryonic laboratory in Arizona where some 1,000 suspended patient, patients are frozen in liquid nitrogen and are waiting for the benefits of limited 
uh, limitless knowledge of the after singularity era. Of course, uh, some people find this perspective debatable. Uh, there are different political orientation among the transhumanism and posthumanism. So there are, for example, left-hand posthumanists. They say transhumanists are bad. They are bad because they are, uh, so to speak, anthropocentrically biased. Uh, we wish to stay the crown of, of, uh, of, of being and even to perfect ourselves, and even to perfect ourselves infinitely, which is very, very uh, anthropocentric and egocentric. It's also egocentric in social and political sense. Not all of the humans will afford this transformation. So only the rich can afford, for example, uh, uh, going to that laboratory in Arizona of Mr. Moore. Moore. Uh, so, uh, uh, as you, as you uh, can imagine, there are some post-humanism who uh, say anything that, exi uh, that exists has right to be uh, regarded as equal to anything else. So this is egalite, 100%, with regard to all the possible beings. Uh, it's posthumanism in that sense that we reject the Greek Christian Enlightenment uh, perspective of humanism. All beings, especially of sen sentient beings, uh, uh, living beings, are equal and should be regarded as equal. Even beings, so to speak, translated into, uh, 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 into uh, computer programs, so to speak, beings uh, written down as, as uh, uh, flow of digital data should be regarded as equal to any other uh, being. You may, you may say, oh, this is completely stupid. But there is a grain of, of sound thought also in that. In any stupidity, you find something. Uh, and some posthumanists boast, we are quite close to no less a figure than Pope Francis. Pope Francis is saying us that because of our uh, humanist perspective, of our uh, overlooking the rights and the requirements of our natu natural environment. We have degraded ourselves. We have degraded not only the uh, nature around us, but also ourselves. That's the interpretation of Laudato Si uh, of France. So some of the posthumanism pretend the Pope is all one of us. My goodness. Uh, so the general idea is, uh, uh, with respect to, to, to that, to, uh, of the, of the post-humanism, is that uh, this decoupling, as some say, of us as a flow of data from the material carrier is the turning point. And this decoupling should be should be accessible to all on, a, on, a, uh, on an equal basis. So they are has such potentialities mm -hmm. that language may produce almost direct effects. In principium in principio And now we can almost immediately transform words uh, communication into into reality. So the the uh, 3D printer 
is uh, is just the first step into into that direction that, that we transform reality almost instantly. And it will be possible. It will be possible if if we go uh, along this path that, that is already uh, already in view. And here is the temptation. And the counter move is that hope, is that 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 asking that we do not uh, forget what we were, what we are, what we hope for will be. But, you know, these are speculations. We do not know. Well, may I no. add something here? Um, but would you may, may I add something here which you uh, may not be satisfied with? Historically speaking, uh, at least in the West, but I think also in East Asia, there has been a response, a consistent and persisting response to unanswerable problems. Now we have unanswerable problems that are global problems, which you were sketching out for us. We all know something like the litany. And the historical, one historical response has been, and I hasten to use this word in a public context, but I, this is what I think, has been praying, yeah. asking for divine help exactly. to deal with, uh, if not to find solutions, at least to find responses to global, globalized problems for which we do not know uh, the solutions today. And uh, my question to you then is, why would such a, an historical and traditional response not be finally satisfying for someone like myself? If you say, Peter, what are you going to do? What kind of solution can you recommend for the terrible global problem of climate change? And if I say, in a moment of philosophical weakness, well, that's what, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to ask some, for some divine help on this matter for myself, that I might address this problem in some not inappropriate way, and for others, my betters, and particularly for the younger others who have been confided to me in a way. How, as a professional philosopher yourself, well, why is that kind of a response not respectable, you might say, academically? Why is that kind of a response one that I cannot make in a professional, uh, philosophical format or, or forum today? Actually, uh, I, I was very close to, 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 to that response, but, uh, you know, without uh, being that explicit as you, as you are. And when I said that, I hope, when I, yes. it was, exactly the same element. And when I insist on that not knowing, it's also, uh, you know, that perspective that you find uh, not only in the religious tradition, but also in, 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 in the, the, the greatest uh, European poetry. If you would take uh, Rilke, for example, you find in Rilke immense uh, spiritual resources that could be of help in, uh, in that situation. The, uh, uh, that we live in future generations. Mm -hmm. That's why I insist on, on classic education, and I insist on the tradition of subsidiarity. I, I even uh, haven't mentioned that. Uh, but this is a, a certain tradition uh, in which I, I try to to, uh, to 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 place all these questions and question marks of mine. Thank you. Abusing the situation that I hold the microphone, I have a sad mission to announce that our time elapsed for this session. And uh, I thank very much Professor Bramski. I thank you all that you attended and had nice questions. I only would like to uh, recall you that tomorrow students of the Ethics, Politics, Economics has a lecture of Jose Casanova. 11.30 in your room.
Thank you.